So how do I kind of work myself around this? Do I take a distribution deal? But are they going to give me money if I take a distribution deal? Maybe I should sign myself to my own label and take a joint venture with the label. You know, like there's all of these like weird things which were very daunting to me when I heard yes. about them in the beginning because I was like, what's a joint venture? Yeah. What, publishing? What's publishing? It's different from the recording contract. Like, what do you mean? So I'm getting paid royalties and I get publishing. So what are royalties and what is publishing, you know? Welcome back to Keeping Up With Show Max. As you can see, I've got two incredible people with me today. Yeah, I've got musician Langa Mabusano. You guys know him, you love him. And I have Danki So Mama Bulu. She's an actor, she's a musician, and today we're talking all things music in the South African music industry. Mm -hmm. Now you guys are still, I would, I would say both of you are fresh into it. I know Langa, you've been in the industry for a little bit now. Yeah. How long has it been when you felt like you've been in the industry? Well, commercially, it would be like three years. But I've been working in the industry since I was 17. Yeah. Now you were on, well, not on, but you were part of the theatre production titled The Fall. That's all about fees must fall and everything that had to do with that. And you guys not only toured locally, but internationally as well. Yeah, we went to quite a few countries with that. I was asking off camera if she was part of, there's a documentary on Showmax title everything must fall and i was like i wonder if tanky so is <laughs> no <laughs> my my fall is a man i'm sure you were there maybe like there's you know. a clip of you so both of you are in music now even though we've spoken a bit about the theater south africans has really brought out some incredible musicians yeah. i mean if you want to throw it back there's brenda fussy there's just like iconic women and men that have just created fantastic music grammy nominated or grammy yeah. winning music and i think Africa has this deep love for music so fire town i mean any generation you pick yeah. music is something that's connected to it but it's a dream that a lot of people have but very few accomplish in terms of striving to be in the music industry now you guys are at different stages of it yeah. how would you say has been your experience in pursuing music well i think for me i my parents never really wanted me to do this so because they didn't want me to do it i always had like this fire to succeed at it you know like I wanted to get to the place where I'm at, where I'm financially like secure. I don't need anything from it, from them, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to show them that this thing meant so much to me. And that started like with the arts education in high school and following on to varsity. Yeah, so just like I, I invested a lot of my time in understanding my my gift first before I wanted to share it. Because when I was very young, I was offered a, re a recording contract. How and old? I think I was like 15. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Hey, hey. How? Wait, how does, how, does one even, how does one even get that? Were you just... I went to an art school, right? Okay. For high school. Okay. That so obviously, sense. there's kids who are in the industry, whose parents are in the industry. There's professionals who come because we would hold a festival every year yeah. for an entire week. And different people, schools will come and watch us performing. Obviously, they'll notice certain people or whatever. And then I, I just felt like it wasn't the right time. And I spent time really like studying music, came, did the classical thing, did the jazz thing until I got sick of it and I left Cape Town. I just think what, what helped me get into the industry is plunking myself in things even if I'm not going to get paid, but like creating relationships, you know, the sessioning, like I wasn't getting paid at some point and at some point I was getting like really small money, but those are people and contacts that I still use today when I need studio time or when I need to do a certain project, you know. Um, the corporates told me a lot about performance, you know, like we would be in a space where no one came to watch us, to be honest with you, you know, like they didn't walk into that space with the intention to watch yeah. us, but we 
have to entertain them in some sort of way and pull them into this um, into this thing that we're doing, you know. And being next to Zoe Mutecha and like Dumiso Manana was just like the pressure, you know, you need to like rise. Yeah. Level up. Yeah, you need to yeah. level up. And I think a lot of people kind of want to go into the industry without spending time trying to understand, first of all, the gift that they have and then the space that they're going to go into because it's also a business at the end of the day, yeah. you know. You need to understand the business of the business because there's people who come in that don't even know how to write an invoice or a rate card, you know. Um, and those things are important. And I always say, like, even if you can't go to art school, like, church is one of the best music in institutions, I, I think. Like, some of the best musicians, producers, singers come from church, you know. So there's different avenues. If, you, if there's a choir in your space, like, involve yourself there. But um, just kind of like the moral of the story is understand who you are, what you have, and also understand the space that you're trying to enter into yeah. because it's really important to, to place yourself in it once you know who you are. Gotcha. Yeah. Invest, invest in, in, in your craft, create relationships in, in the music, in the space that you want to be in. But before you even start creating relationships, open a book and read about music business. Because you're going to be given a contract that says jibba jabba jibba jabba jibba jabba jibba jabba. You're going to be told about, hey, just come, come sing for me, for my album, when you should be getting paid yeah. for that session, yeah. you know? Um, and lots of people get cheated and kind of played because they don't actually understand the space that they're going into. So it's, it's, it's very important to kind of like stand back a little bit and, and observe before you kind of like work. That's just kind of the kind of person I am yeah. before I do anything. Okay, now Tank, you, yeah. you obviously, I, I would say, started really progressing in theatre. Yeah. But those who know you know your love for music and your yeah. one-man shows that you put on and everyone just comes through. I would say, from your experience, how has been your relationship with the music industry? Well, I mean, uh, I started late because I studied theatre. Um, I was singing from a very early age as well. I started at church, Baptist, because <laughs> we come from the same town. I uh, started at church, uh, went on to Lady Grey Arts Academy. Uh, where I performed uh, at school and I performed for, for you know, other venues outside of school as well. But there, I never had to really think about what I was doing. I was yeah. singing covers. My school handled everything, the transport, that wasn't getting paid for it though. And, you know, I decided, you know, I'm a, I'm a triple threat and I'd like to explore all these parts of myself. And I felt like music was more of a personal thing for me and I decided I'm gonna study theatre, theatre and performance, because while I felt I could sing, I struggled with, with allowing people into this thing that was so personal yeah. to me. Yeah. So I studied theatre and um, I became quite successful with that, with like uh, being in The Fall and being in Auntie Mill, the musical. And I was very impatient for the longest time because I felt, you know, this is, this is something I want to do. I started writing music in first year, 2012, and I would always watch these people, even when Langa, because I knew Langa in varsity, yeah. when I'd start seeing him trending on Twitter, I was like, Yeah, you would trend on Twitter. <laughs> where, where am I? But I always help. It's I, crazy. I, Do you remember the first time I, I saw you singing and I told you you made me cry? And a friend of mine was like, was You're about varsity. to hear John Legend. It was crazy. <laughs> the first time I heard him, and I was singing, they like, oh. Like, as much as I knew you as an actress, yeah. and like, because when I met you, like, in the hitting space, I was like, Whoa. This girl is very serious about her drama. Like, <laughs> you can see, like, this is her space. And then Diana showed me a video of you oh, singing. Oh, yeah, the cover. It's a cover. But yeah, it's been, oh, it's been tricky because at the same time, while I, I love that I studied theater and I worked in theater, it sort of also took a bit of time away from me learning more about the music business and and how to insert myself into that space but i decided that this year this year i felt ready i felt ready to to let my stuff out i felt ready to commit to the not having my rent money in my account all the time it's very difficult when you're when you're used to being employed all the time to to take the leap and go i believe in myself so i had to wait for that moment where i I had written enough and performed enough that I went, this is good stuff. 
I believe I'm ready. I've, I've grown enough of a thick skin to be able to handle what's coming. And honestly, I love music. So I'm, I, I want to learn about the business and I want to be there, but it's the thing for me that like, it's, a, it, it's like breathing to me. Yeah. So if I don't do it, it makes every other aspect of my life seem, you know, yeah. you're aware. Like what's the point of, of getting up? Now Langa, once you started getting traction in terms of the public knowing your music, yeah. What were some of the challenges? Because you've, you've had a background, like you said, in music. You've had upbringing in, a, in an art school. You had already, from a long amount of time, formed relationships with people within the industry. But now that everyone's knowing the name and the music, what would you say were some of the challenges that you had to overcome? Two of like the biggest challenges were the pressure to like rush things. You know, for, for like a, for all of last year, all I would hear every time I'd wake up or go somewhere or do an interview or go to an award show or whatever would be, where's the album? Where's the album? Where's the album? Where's the album? And I was really, for me, like this is my first album, you know? I'm really trying to pour in my heart and I really want to be 50 and be like, wow. I made a masterpiece, yes. you know? Um, and I'm still happy to be sharing that music with people, like at 50, you know? It was that pressure. Um, I don't, yeah. I think it was mainly that, and also just kind of starting to to set up the, the more business side of things more than anything. I had to like register a business and learn to invoice from the business and pay who myself. You? Who helped you with all of that? Was it school? I asked people, man. Okay. I really asked people. I would be like, how do you do it? Yeah. You know, I would ask Black Coffee, like anyone around me, if I had a moment to ask questions, that would be the time where I would, I would just like be a sponge as much as possible because I know that I want to do this for a long time, but I don't want to constantly be on stage or constantly be in studio like I am now, you know. Um, I want to do it for a long time and I want it to sustain my life. And that means I need to have ownership of what I create. Um, but that also means I need to know how to allow the music to reach as many people as possible. Because when I was doing it independently, I could only reach so many people. I was like, Cool, I have the label relationship, but I still kind of want my ownership. So how do I kind of work myself around this? Do I take a distribution deal? But are they gonna give me money if I take a distribution deal? Maybe I should sign myself to my own label and take a joint venture with the label, you know? Like there was all of these like weird things which were very daunting to me when I heard about them in the beginning because I was like, what's a joint venture? <sighs> what, yeah. Publishing? What's publishing? It's different from the recording contract. Like, what do you mean? So I'm getting paid royalties and I get publishing. So what are royalties and what is publishing, you know? And that, th those are the moments, like those really daunting moments really pushed me to, to really like open myself up to educating myself as much as possible. Tank, for you, just in wrapping things up, what would you say have been some of your challenges? Now, are they similar or slightly different? I mean, definitely similar. Um, I'm glad you're at a point where you know all these things because I'm definitely still like... Still learning well. I know, I know, you know, <laughs> theatre ways of doing things, how you sign contracts there, how you sell your work there. But in terms of music, I remember going to Samro and being like, so there's more than one form. Yeah. <laughs> what do all these forms mean <laughs> you know am i in it's a it's a it's a lot it's a lot and that's why it takes time and it takes a moment of you deciding because it's, it's a full-time job it's not yeah. like oh i can already sing so i'm gonna you know hop into the studio sing a few no it's every 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 aspect of it and that's how people get exploited and that's why i'm not signed to anyone yet because i feel i don't know enough to be able to protect myself against yeah. those things so i i want to to learn all those things as well. But for me, the biggest challenge was getting people to trust that they could work with me. Oh. Theater wise, people are like, oh, happy. But when it came your name to, was maybe more yeah. known in theater. And with music, people were very reluctant. People, um, you know, the first thing is, did you study music? And I was like, no, but I, 
I write pretty well. This is the craziest thing. And I've never been asked. Oh, that I, I, for a moment, I, I was once. like, I'm gonna move to Joburg because people in Cape Town actually, they, they need either you already must be a name in that specific um, art or. And luckily, I did Auntie Mo the musical with Mark Lottering, yeah. and I met this amazing band who were just like, and I was, and I said to them, guys, I'm learning. I'm not, I'm not Lyra. You know, I'm learning. I need people who are going to have my back. And I promise you, even if I can't pay you everything now, but this is a journey we're walking yeah. together. And these guys were just like, sure, man, let's do this thing, man. Let's put on this show. Let's, you know, all my songs at some point were really sad and slow. And I remember them being like, we need to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get the, the, get the, the blood flowing. So, yeah. so I have this amazing support system. They're called Sweet Chili. They'd kill me if I didn't mention them. They're called Sweet Chili. I try to get them to name themselves something else, but I failed. But they're, yeah, they've been my biggest um, safety net because they've also worked with amazing musicians mm. and they give me advice on certain things and, and, you know, they enjoy my music. Yeah. And that for me is, yeah. I absolutely love that. Sorry, there was one point before we close off that okay. I don't want to be missed which she kind of touched on when she was talking about the band. It's a full-time job that also drains you of a lot of money. That's another big ch challenge with being in music and being independent. I don't want to make it seem like it's fun. It drains you yeah. of a lot of money. Studio time is not cheap. Producers can, are not okay, can cheap. I, I hear this thing of studio time not being cheap. Can yeah. somebody drop a number and give me an example of what it studio depends, time is? Right? So the, like they, maybe on the lowest scale of things. So maybe the cheapest would maybe be like the studios where, where I go to where, where it's like 2.4 for half a day. Okay. And then the studios that you can go to that are like 8K for the day, you know? But then there's great initiatives like Red Bull mm. that allow you to come into the studio for free. You kind of just apply through the program. I'm sure there's a website for it. Yeah. And cool, um, yeah, and they let you come into the space. Yeah, they let you into the space and they'll give you studio time for free. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So we'll kind of wrap things up on that. What can people expect from you guys in the future? Or would you like to punt? Where can they follow you? You know. They can just find me on social media at Langamav, Twitter, Instagram, Langamav also, Facebook. Okay. Uh, find me on Twitter as well. I, I didn't make them all the same name. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> you still can. I mean, mine, you can change it. Oh, the, the handle. Okay. Yeah. Twitter at real underscore thank you so. Instagram at t.j underscore mamabolo. Help me. I'll put it in the description um, box below because yeah. you're not going to remember you know it. I was young and wild and I thought I will remember all of this. And I have my EP is dropping next month. Yes. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's dropping next month. Um, if you follow me on social media, it'll it'll all be there. Yeah. And I have a live show at the Baxter, seven piece live band, two backing vocalists, nice. all original music nice. for two weeks and web tickets or you can go to the Baxter Theatre or at any, any pick and pay and you will have a good time. I can promise you that. <laughs> she can promise you that. I'll put all I'll the details in the, description in, the, in the description bar because y'all might not remember any of yeah, that. Yeah, no, I speak <laughs> super fast also, I've been told. So. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you thank for you sharing. For guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow them. Until next time, bye guys. <laughs>